everyone welcome to some questions on amount of substances so first question we've got a multiple choice question we've got a compound m containing a set amount of carbon hydrogen and nitrogen and it asks us what the empirical formula of m is so whenever we see something like this hopefully this is ten, tends to be a question that's answered fairly well we need to work out what that empirical formula is so what we're going to do is we're going to take the amount that we have i'm going to work out what the moles are so take the mass and divide it by the atomic mass of each particular one so carbon's 12 hydrogen will be one nitrogen's going to be 14. so we work out what those are giving us 0 0.12 0 0.482 and 0 0.121 at this point you want to take whichever one of those answers you've just worked out take the smallest value and divide all of them by that particular one so this one would be our lowest one would be 0.121 so you can divide all those three answers by 0.121 if we do that we'll find that for carbon it pretty much is one so we round that to one hydrogen will be four and then nitrogen will be one so if we want a carbon that's one hydrogen that's four and nitrogen that's one therefore the answer would be c Next question, which mass of substance contains the greatest number of atoms? So again, kind of like the first question, it's only worth one mark, but we're going to have to do some calculations. We can't just simply guess this. I mean, if you're struggling for time, you've got one in four chance of getting it right. But a multiple guess sometimes is last case result, really, but we'll try and work it out in the first instance. So working out the number of atoms. Now, if you hear or see number of atoms, You've then got to think Avogadro. And if you think Avogadro, you should hopefully know what its constant is, 6.02 times 23. And that's where we're starting off at. So I've got to work out the moles first and foremost, because I can't work out anything else. I've been given a mass and I've got a formula. So I can work out the MR and I can and I've got the mass. So moles mass over MR, that links those three together. And then what I'm gonna do. Once I've worked out my number of moles, I'm going to work out how many atoms it, from that. So my number of atoms is going to be the moles that I work out times up by Avogadro's constant. So, Stephen walking through all this, so we've got R3 divided by 17, because it's 14 from nitrogen plus 3 lots of 1 from hydrogen. Gives me my moles of 0 0.176, and then times by Avogadro's, Again, 6.023 times 10 to 23, and then I get my answer there. Again, you can pause and have a look at those calculations, make sure you've got yours right as well. But if I have a look at all of those, I'm looking which has the greatest number, well, that will be A, times 10 to 23. The other ones are times 10 to 22. So that's that one there. Okay, so ibuprofen, there it is. We've got key bit of information which is we've got 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. It asks us what is the amount in moles of ibuprofen in a standard tablet. Now again, this, you're not going to simply, if you know this, then fair play, but don't see why you would. So you're going to have to do some calculations. So again, I've got to work out the moles. Well, the equation for moles is mass divided by the MR. Now, thankfully, the question has given me the mass but we don't work in milligrams, we work in grams. So I've got to do my conversion. This is where you're going to need to know some conversions. Milligrams to grams. So 200 milligrams is 0.2 grams. Okay, perfect. Ibuprofen. Now, the only thing we now need is the MR. Now, we haven't been told the MR, but we have been shown what ibuprofen looks like. Now, this is where we've got to simply count it all up. We're going to count up how many carbons, how many hydrogens, and how many oxygens we have. If you count up all of those, hopefully, again, you pause it and have a count yourself. We've got 13 carbons, 2 oxygens, and then 18 hydrogens. Okay, so have a pause, see if you can get those. Hopefully, you haven't had go it already before I've gone through it. If you do that, you do 13 times by 12. You do 2 times 16, and then plus 18, you should get 206. And then, if you do your 0.2 divided by 206, you get an answer there. 
is that one of our answers? Well, this is where you cross your fingers and hope that it, there is one of the answers that's there, which is B. Okay, next question. We've got zinc, calcium carbonate, measuring the volume of gas. Okay, we have got 0 0.02 of zinc, 0 0.0, sorry, so 0.27 of zinc, 0.38 of calcium carbonate. Heat is strongly, collect the volume of gas, repeated, okay. Calculate the maximum volume of carbon monoxide, room temperature and pressure by heating your zinc and your calcium carbonate. Okay, a lot of information there can always seem, if people get a bit lost with all this, going through and highlighting key information is always a good thing to do. Now, to start a question, you think, right, what can I work out? You won't be able to work out your answer straight away sometimes. You've got to do some other stages first to then get to your final answer. Now, if I'm looking at this, the information I've been given, I've got a mass of zinc. Well, I've got a mass. I can look at my periodic table. I can find out what the, the mass of zinc is. Molar mass, that is. And I can work out the moles. So that's the only thing I can work out. So okay, I don't. That's not the answer, but it's a starting point. So I take my point two seven divided by sixty five point four. I get some moles there. Well, again, wh what now, what can I do now? The only thing I can do is work out my moles for my calcium carbonate. Now, doing both of those gets you one mark. Good starting point. Now, what can I then do? Well, looking at those two values we can then determine which one is the limiting reagent so looking at those there which one do i have most of well zinc is in excess so i've actually got my limiting reagent is my calcium carbonate so that's a good thing to know the calcium carbonate is going to run out first i'll have loads of zinc left over now from this we need to know what is actually going on so we have our zinc and our calcium carbonate. We were told in the question down here that we've got some carbon monoxide is being produced. We're heating it strongly. So we know that one of our products is calcium, sorry, calcium is carbon monoxide. And therefore we've got to work out what the rest of it is. So we've got some zinc oxide plus calcium oxide. So if we're looking here, we have a ratio of one to one because we have Again, nothing there. Again, if you're looking at zinc as well, if you wanted to, but nothing there and nothing there. So there's a big one in front of them. It's got a one-to-one -one ratio. So based on this, we can then work out what the moles of carbon monoxide is. So we're not really concerned about the zinc because that's an excess. So we want to use the calcium carbonate moles. So we're going to have the same amount of moles of our carbon monoxide. So we've got that. So we've got moles of calcium. I keep saying calcium. Apologies. We've got the moles of carbon monoxide. We've got to work out the volume. Well, this is where we need to know an equation. We can work out volume from the moles. And that is where we take the moles and times it up by 24,000. Why 24,000? We want it in centimetres cubed. So in decimeters, we just times by 24. So all we do is then take our value for the moles, times by 24,000, and gives us 91. Now, that first mark, I think a lot of people would get, is the second mark where people would fall down a little bit. But hopefully that makes sense. The going, sometimes you get given the equation, sometimes you don't. That's why if you're not given it, again, putting equations together, people can find it a little bit tricky, but you know what you're starting with, you know one of the products, so hopefully you can put the other ones together by looking at your reactants, things like that. So two marks on that, quite a bit to get two marks there. Okay, and final question. Student did not obtain the volume of gas predicted in the first part. Apart from re repeating what the improvements could be have in this practical procedure to get more accurate results, again, practical based question, do you know practicals, do you know how to improve them? So for this one, two marks, we're looking for something such as heat until the syringe stops moving to make sure that reaction has come to a completion and also then waiting it to cool before you measure your final volume 
again, a couple things there to improve on that one. Okay, so that'll do for our questions today. See you next time.